like we got a special treat here. What we have is a rear end that come out of an ambulance from 1998 with a 7 3 liter diesel and a, a 4R100 transmission from 10 of 98. It was in an ambulance package so we had the rear end pulled because the ambulance had fairly low miles, decent miles I would say. The code on the door sticker said E what? E6? E6, yeah. So what we have here is a unicorn. This is a Dana 70 with three and a half inch tubes, approximately 73 inches, wheel hub to wheel hub, that means rim mounting, 73 inches. When a normal Dana 60 that's in our Econoline is 67 inches wheel hub to wheel hub wheel mounting surface to wheel mounting surface yeah it's about a five inch difference so it's about a five inch length difference so overall but it's two and a half inches out on each side per rim so now we could possibly do away with our our offset 16 by 10s and go back with 16 by 8 inch rims and be able to rotate tires properly with a dually rear end that has single mount single wheel mount single wheel mount on a dually dually style rear end now the Dana 70U 2 is a unicorn this is the 2U the 2U because it is 411 gear ratio out of the E series van frame so 98 and down was marked as E6 on the door sticker. And E6 meant 411 gear ratio or down, meaning down as in 373, etc. This, this one happened to have 411s, and a special part about it is, let me rotate the uh, flange. Special part is, is it's got forged track lock on it, and the clutches in it even look good. So we pulled the front pinion uh, flange, and we checked the baron, and we changed the seal. We pulled the rear end cover, and we painted up the gears and checked their match pattern, and they all look good. The wheel seals, right now it's full of fluid with limited slip differential fluid. And the wheel seals do not leak or anything. So the way we gather it is, in our 99 Econoline Super Duty regular van, we have a Dana 60 U. 60 U. Dana 60 U doesn't match other forms where they say the Dana 60s come with three and an eighth tubes. Three and an eighth tubes right here. Our actual Dana 60U in our truck that we're fixing to take it out and replace with this because of the posi track and all has three and a half inch tubes just like this one which is strange but that's the way Dana did it so the 70U2 and the 60U are very similar except for some major upgrades Number one, they have the extension housings. Now, if we wanted to shorten this rear end, we could just simply take our 32 tooth spawn axles, which this this has. A normal Dana 70 has around 35 spawns. Yeah. But this has 32 spawns, but the axles are longer because the hubs are longer. The rotor unbolts from right here after you remove the hub assembly, and then you have bolts behind here. So then this becomes essentially what we have a wheel on a, extension yeah on our other van so the hubs are acting as a wheel extension I wouldn't be surprised if we could remove this rotor and then take this hub and slide it all the way into here if we were to replace the entire unit side in other words we could take our rear end our 60U and swap it swap parts out by removing these four bolts here and removing this side of the unit and it uses the same brake calipers as our 60U, as the normal Ford stock Econoline. In fact, the 60U, they say the hubs, the hubs are bored bigger, so you can upgrade the 32 to 35 spawn axles with no problem. I wonder why truck 
and van and 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 jeep Jeeps. jeep rock crawler enthusiasts hunt these rear ends so desperately because there's so many upgrades you can do plus the difference between this rear end and our rear end our dana 60u is this one has the what ring gear ten and a half ten and a half ring gear which is a much heavier duty ring gear and carrier and then ours has a 975 975 yeah. ring gear and carrier ours has an open carrier this has like I said, forge track lock. So go around and film the bum number. <laughs> the bill the bill code number. If you can read it. Yeah, because that BOM number threw us for a loop. We couldn't find a day in a sixty bill because we thought this was a day in a sixty. Here it is, six oh six oh two six dash two. LS. Limited slip. So if you were if we were smart enough, we would have said, hey, let's take a look over here at the other side where Dana actually marks on their U2s. U, U stands for unicorn, by the way. <laughs> Just kidding. 70-2U. So what we're dealing with here is a axle weight of what? Uh, 8,500, I think. 8,500 pounds. That's what it's rated for. Versus an axle that's rated for what? It's about 63. 6,300 pounds. So that's what's fixing to go in our E-Series van. Yeah. So essentially we could uh, tow out to a house off its foundation. That's just the, what it's rated for, the axle to hold on top of it. Weight on top, the axle can handle 8,000 pounds. That's cargo weight? Yes. Not not a uh, towing capacity. Towing capacity could be... Because I know this weighs about yeah. 700 pounds. When you match everything, you know, 4,000 pound tires, heavy suspension, this... You could keep going up till I'm not sure how much we towed a thirteen thousand pound trailer with that sixty back there. The Dana sixty with the three and a half inch tubes. The Dana sixty U. And that was without timbrins and without heavy tires. Right. So we, we towed could, them with thirty one hundred pound tire, thirty one hundred pound rated tires. Now we have forty one hundred. And then we're about rated. to have a seventy two U in it, and we have timbrins on. So theoretically, we can go up to fifteen to seventeen thousand pounds if we want. Right. Max. As or, gas, as gas yeah. gets more expensive. Right. Or nine thousand pound trailer daily, as other people do with these rear ends. Right. Daily tow. So. With no margin. So our original brake calipers we're gonna keep intact without losing any brake pressure. We got the ones that we pulled off the ambulance over here. Because it's an E-Series, everything matches up. Right, and you can see that the calipers are the same. Even the brake pads that I have for our Econoline match. The old brake pads off the Amulet. So, that all matches. And these are ceramic pads just from the internet. And uh, we can go back with 15 by 8s and still have that wheel stance that sticks out. We figure rim to rim... With a 15 by with a 16 by 8 inch rim, with the wheel stance at the outer edge of the rim, we're going to get approximately 80 and a half to 81 inches. Yeah. From rim to rim. That's one, a quarter inch of what we got right now. Past what we have right now. Uh, with our 15 by with, with our 16, 16 by, by tens. tens. Yeah. And that's with a wheel offset backspacing of four and a half. Jeez, and so with a regular so, four and a quarter back space and 16 by 8 rims. Which stick way out too far. Further than what we have right now. Which is bad enough that we already have to stick fender skirts. Um, well, we could take a walk and look if you can not film a license plate. Yeah. So there's our 4,100 pound tires. You've seen it in other videos, I'm sure. And what we have is a 16 by 10 with a four and a quarter inch backspacing. That means the rim is poking out as far as it possibly could be to be stable. And you can see the, the, the wheel alignment to the front is almost the same as the front. It doesn't tuck under the truck anymore. And you can see where we come up to the fender well right here. So you effectively corrected the three inch space issue for full floaters. Full floaters have a shorter by three inches than the front. So they're tracking three inches shorter. Even trucks track that way. Some of them with the with the that have the eight the uh, full floaters. Yeah. So the full floaters are shorter and and overall, but now we can make a make it wider and use a stock 15 by 16 by eight 
as I say stock, the real stock is 16 by 7 but we have upgraded rims uh, bullet hole style like this to accommodate that um, and they'll still fit these tires too these tires will still mount on those rims and that's what we're going to do and eventually these tires are going to go up front to have a wide stance up front and a heavy payload and then in the rear they're going to get some tires the same as these essentially even though they don't really make these anymore they have a new upgraded model of a 285 65 16 and the new upgrade is Vanguard um, I think of Vanguard or is it no it's Van Contact That's Van Contact sorry Van Contact made by Continental made in Germany and they're about $400 a tire however the weight rating on them is 4,300 pounds per tire. So that's a super single. And a theoretical uh, speed load of 106, I think. Right. <laughs> Not and that you can get the vans past those speeds anyway. No, you'll vibrate all over the road. This is a 128N tire, 75 PSI. Uh, it says 123R, meaning like uh, if you wanted to go faster, I guess. Where, right. where is the weight rating? Max load single. 3,900. Okay, so these, 50. Are, these are 3,950 pounds. Uh, 70. <laughs> so about 4,000 still. Okay, but the Vanguards are an, the uh, van contacts are an upgrade to these with the same tread pattern, a, high, a highway tread pattern, all season, pretty much. Yeah. And they look the same. For so RVs and buses. So we're going to switch, and they're 30 inches tall, which is perfect for the Econolons with the big tires, the cargos. Not the Econolons like that one, which require a 28 inch tall tire. So, we're gonna have a good time with this, removing four U-bolts with an impact uh, after we jack the body up, and then, uh, and then we'll... We should make a note that that rear end does stick out a little further. Yes, a half inch. Max, yeah. Max further. So, the, so, drive shaft so the pinion is going to stick out, even though the pinion is a Dana 60 pinion, it's still got a taller ring gear. Well, not necessarily a Dana 60 pinion, it uses some of the same bearings, but the pinion itself is a bit fatter, you know, for, is it? yeah, for, to accommodate the 10 and a half inch ring gear, it's a bit fatter, but it uses some of the same bearings, in fact, most of the same bearings as a Dana 60, carrier bearings, 60U, 60U and 60 regular. Okay, well, you, I, yeah. I know that they're very hard to tell apart by the pineapple. Yeah. By looking at the pineapple itself. However, the pinion sticks out closer, so you may need a shorter drive shaft. We're going to make some alterations to make our drive shaft fit. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about those later. Uh, we figure we need about a half inch of clearance from our drive shaft that we can scam uh, in a different way and I mean the kind of ways that people wouldn't recommend but this is our job this is what we do and if we want to cut our tail shaft shorter oh, you mean our transmission output shaft yeah if we want to cut our tail shaft shorter without removing the temper from the steel we can do so and get away with it and all we need to do is scat steel a half inch off of it so the yoke can actually essentially slip yoke can slide in a half inch further when you're going over street bumps or accelerating or pulling the trailer. It'll still clear the bush, it'll still clear the um, the extension housing seal. Correct. So drive shafts are a pain in the butt to get for these things. There's so many different drive shafts to get and the stock drive shafts they have problems from forward balancing. They never um, were able to balance them above 80 apparently. No, so they switched to aluminum drive shafts because they're lighter. And Coming from Ford Techs. Yeah. And this is from Ford Technician. So back in 99, it didn't offer aluminum drive shaft for this vehicle. So this 100 and what, 36 inch wheelbase, is that what this is? 138. One, yeah. This is a 138 wheelbase? Yeah. So the 138 wheelbase had like three different drive shafts made for it. Four. You had the V10 version. You had the, that was a different size. You had the diesel. You had the diesel. That was a different length. So you had all kinds of applications. Oh yeah, add another one. You had one for the 5.4 liter single wheel 
in the rear gas and 5.4 dually in the rear gas. Right, and they were about 5 eighths of an inch difference in length. So we have all these different lengths we have to accommodate for. We could show off our tried Dorman drive shaft that didn't work so well. Dorman, Dorman's drive shaft was a piece of junk. First of all, it was too heavy for this application and it vibrated really bad because it was too heavy. Secondly, some of their welds were welded crooked. So Dorman doesn't get my vote with their $800 drive shaft. So I went sifting through the junkyard and found an actual drive shaft that fits this van that is the original. It just happens to be a tiniest bit longer than Dorman's and way in lighter. But note the closer the U-joint is to the front, to the tail of the transmission, the less vibration you have at higher speeds. Right. I've found that. So a tiny bit longer might actually be beneficial if you can't bottom out. If we can stop us from bottoming out against tail shaft, we're good. That's what those timbers are for. Right. The timber on the limber limit our movement and give us an extra 5,000 pound weight to uh, tongue capacity. So, yeah, we're, we're trying to make a Loomis truck here. A <laughs> uh, Wells Fargo truck. Anyway, so we'll see what happens and with gas prices going up. That's not going to be too friendly to us, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't eat, it to, eat up too much more fuel than normal. All right, let's get on it. 